you know what? We've basically won the lottery with artificial intelligence. It is a fact that nobody can debate. Artificial intelligence has completely opened the doors for everyday professionals like me, like you, and anyone else to create software that makes a real impact. Whether it's agricultural, forestry, urban development, if you can imagine it, we can build it. And let me tell you, we are talking about taking what we know from the field and turning it into usable tech. No programming PhD required. Those days are in the past. Now that we have artificial intelligence, and get this, I never thought I'd be developing full-blown applications. Sure, I have played around with the scripts and shiny apps before, but this, this is next level, my friend. Artificial intelligence bridge the gap between field expertise and software creation. If that is not a revolution, I don't know what is. But let me start from the beginning. I am Marcel, I'm a hydrogeologist, and I'm the developer of the QGIS plugin Sampling Time. Sampling Time, a QGIS plugin, is revolutionizing the sampling process by automating tasks, reducing costs, and increasing efficiency. Supporting judgmental, random, systematic, stratified, and cluster sampling methods, it adapts to any project's needs. A smarter way to sample is now available. Hey everyone, and welcome to the very first video in our six part series on the QGIS plugin Sampling Time. In this series, we are going to dive deep into each sampling method. Judgmental, random, systematic, stratified, and cluster sampling, with a full video dedicated to each one. These videos will show you how to get the most out of the plugin, with real examples for each sampling method. But I wanted to do something a bit different too. While we explore each feature, I'll share the thinking behind them, why this button does that, or why that function works this way. You know, those little design decisions that shape your experience with the plugin. It is pretty rare to get these behind the scenes insights directly from the developer. So think of this as hanging out with the person behind the code. I'm very excited to share my ideas, the challenges I face, and the lessons I learned along the way. And speaking of challenges, let me be real with you. We've all seen those flashy YouTube videos promising you can build full applications with artificial intelligence in minutes. Just type a prompt, click a button, and boom, instant software. But let me tell you, that was not my experience. Not even close, believe me. Creating this plugin has been a journey, month of work, from sketching the first interface to refining every function, testing, debugging, and overcoming challenge after challenge. And let's get one thing straight. That's exactly what it should be. Artificial intelligence is powerful. We already know that, no doubt about it. But building complex applications requires careful guidance. It's about breaking down your vision into precise instructions, building a step by step until you create something solid and useful. And that's exactly what I set out to do with sampling time. Now comes the part you are going to love. Sampling time is 100% free and open source. That's right, no paywalls, no subscriptions, no hidden catches. It's fully available in the official QGIS plugin repository, which indicates compliance with the quality standards and security reviews established by QGIS. These official approvals ensures the plugin is reliable, well integrated, and safe to use within your QGIS environment. Now, let me show you how to install it. The easiest way, 
right through the QGIS interface. Just open QGIS, go to Plugins, Manage and Install Plugins, click the All tab, search for sampling time, select it from the list and hit Install Plugin. That's it, you are ready to go. But what if you prefer a manual installation? No worries, you can download sampling time directly from QGIS plugin repository. Just click the blue download latest button to save the file. Then open QGIS, go to plugins, manage and install plugins, switch to the install from zip tab, select the file you just downloaded and click install plugin. And that's it, ready to use. Once installed, you'll find sampling time in two handy locations, right there in your vector toolbar and also under the vector menu at the top of your screen. Easy to find, easy to use. Oh, one more thing. If you are interested in going deeper, all the magic happens in our GitHub repository. You'll find the full source code, a space to report issues, and you can even suggest new features. That's the beauty of open source. We grow through collaboration, so don't hesitate to jump in and share your ideas. And hey, if you want to master every aspect of the plugin, I've got great news. There's a complete official guide available at gscourse.online. Just head over to the Geoscience app section and click on QGIS plugin sampling time. Trust me, everything you need to know about the plugin is right there, explained step by step. All the links you need are in the video description. Let's take a tour of the plugin's interface. It's organized in three main panels, and I've used different colors for each one. But don't worry, there is a reason behind every color choice. This isn't just about making things look pretty. It's about creating an intuitive user experience that helps you navigate the plugin effortlessly. This color choice follow basic user interface design principles, helping organize information visually, separate different functions, improve intuitive navigation, highlight important areas, and reduce cognitive load while you are using the plugin. The first panel, which I call the initiation panel, comes in a dark gray. This is where all the main settings live. Think of it as the control center for configuring the file that will store your project samples. Next up is the reset and close panel, which I made light red to catch your attention. These buttons are pretty important. Finally, we have the sampling method panel in light yellow, which nicely separate different sampling approaches. I've also included some white areas for features that are common across different sampling methods and like green for creating sample areas, exclusion zones, strata and clusters. There is also this helpful light blue section that explains each sampling method and gives you a quiet guide on how to use it. Now, let me walk you through every button in the initiation panel. The most important one is the Select Shape File for Sampling drop down. Here is where you can select any shape file layer that you have already loaded into your QGIS layer panel. Here, a crucial point you'll need a shape file with your sampling area loaded here to run any sampling method. For judgmental, random, and systematic sampling, a single area shapefile will do the trick. But for stratify and cluster sampling, you'll need an area divided into smaller sections. Don't worry if you don't have these files ready. You can create them using the Generate Shapefile tab, where you can make sample areas, exclusion zones, and even strata and clusters. Here's something important you need to know. Wherever coordinates reference system, 
your loaded shapefile has, that's the same system your final sampling shapefile will use. Let me say that again, because it's really important the coordinate systems of your input shapefile will be exactly the same as the coordinate systems of your final shapefile with all your samples. By the way, if you open the plugin first and then open your QGIS project, you may notice the layers aren't show up in the drop down. No problem, just hit the reset button, follow the pop up instructions, and your layers will appear. And if the layers you need isn't in QGIS yet, just click the three dots next to the drop-down. This lets you browse your computer and load files from any folder. Once loaded, it will automatically appear in the drop-down for you to select. Next up is the Select Exclusion Areas for Sampling button. This is where you can load shape files for areas you want to exclude for sampling. Could be any geometry, lines, points, or polygons. Just remember, this needs to be inside your sampling areas and use the same coordinate systems. Think of this as your no-go zones for sampling. Loading then is simple. Click the button, select your file, hit open, and it's loaded. Change your mind about an exclusion zone. Just double click it in the panel to remove it. The next button, it's all about symbology. Click it and it will open the folder with all the custom symbols created for this plugin. These aren't built into QGIS by default, but don't worry, I will show you how to install them when we get to one of the sampling method videos. Moving on to the Enter Sample Label Root button. This is a neat feature for automatically labeling your samples. Just type in whatever characters you want as the base of your label, and the plugin will add sequential numbers to the end, from one to however many samples you create. Just remember to hit the Save Label button when you are done. No label in mind? Leave it in blank, and the plugin will use simple numbers by default. The Select Sample Symbol button lets you choose how your samples will look on the map. We have got 10 different symbols in this first version, but we can add more based on what users need. Want a specific symbol? Let me know in the video comments or in the Plugins GitHub repository. Once you've picked your symbol, click it and hit Save Symbol. This will only show up in your final sampling shape file. Forgot to pick one? No worries, you will get a random color cycle by default. The About Sampling Time button is not part of the workflow, it's more of an information center. Click it to build the tiles about the plugin, including its purpose, version, and creation date. And yes, you will also see that I am the author. Additionally, you will find my contact email for suggestions or feedback, a direct link to the user guide on gscourse.online, and a license information. Speaking of the license, there is currently a small bug where the license file won't open. I have to remove the TXT extension for the QGIS repository, but the plugin still looks for it. I will fix this in the next version by adding another license file with the TXT extension. Now for the reset and close panel. The reset button is super helpful for several reasons. First, it's sync data. When you add new layers to QGIS, hitting reset makes sure the plugin syncs them. Second, it cleans the interface, perfect for starting fresh. Third, it is great for troubleshooting if things get weird. Fourth, it fries up memory to keep things running smoothly. And fifth, it's quickly way to start over if you make a mistake. There are two ways to close the plugin. Using the button in the reset panel will reset everything before closing. Next time you open it, you will start fresh. But if you use the X button instead, 
your session data stays put. Reopen the plugin and everything's right where you left it. As for the sampling method panel, I won't cover that here. I'm making a dedicated video for each sampling method. That way we can really dig into each one with real examples. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.